Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy, and I'm Jonathan, and today we will be going through an, yet another tutorial on creating our Sudoku uh, solver. This I plan on being my last tutorial on this one project. When we have finished with uh, this tutorial, you will not have the most ideal Sudoku solver, but it will be able to solve practically everything. I'm just going to set this to zero, set the grid zero. Um, so there are optimizations to be made, better strategies to be used. I have personally created Sudoku solvers that um, you will find that there are certain challenges that this program will have difficulty solving, and I uh, have created solvers which overcome those, uh, those uh, issues, but um, there's no point uh, getting too picky. It's just a Sudoku solver. If people, if there is enough interest, I will continue making uh, tutorials on enhancing the Sudoku solver. But basically, it's solving it faster than we are. Uh, in fact, in a matter of milliseconds, on most in most cases, uh, what more could you want? So there's just a few things. Uh, I ended the last tutorial uh, talking about some of the limitations of uh, this, such as if we changed, uh, let's just run this blank grid. Um, make sure your grid is all blank. And if you run it, you will notice that uh, it solves it. It should solve it correctly. Um, if we set this to a 2, for instance, you'll notice when we run it, it uh, does solve it. It solves. It gives actually a different solve, but it put this one to 3. And if you think about the logic, that makes sense. It took the first spot and increased it by one, and then continued solving, assuming this was three. And if it wasn't, uh, if that had had an error, it would have uh, uh, deleted the three and continued. Um, so it didn't provide a two. And uh, if we had put a, a a three there or something, you know, it it wouldn't have uh, respected that exactly. And so let's uh, come up with a method of testing. Um, and this is partially why I created two user grids. Some of you might have wondered, and I did mention in one of my tutorials that I have a third user grid, and that is what I use for super optimizations. Uh, it requires a third user grid. But just as the functionality gets a, a little more advanced, you end up needing more material to work with and a more, uh, more uh, tables to, uh, uh, to store memory in. So in this user grid, uh, let's. This is a user grid, and what we solve is a grid. We basically the main runs through and uh, creates a, a grid, um, which is a mirror image. So it is true that if we set this to a two, grid at spot zero zero would also become a two. But how do we incorporate that? Well, here is how. I would go about it. This is what I would do. Right at the beginning of this while loop, um, as long as, which is basically saying while, I'll add a comment, uh, while not solved, um, we want to check is the user, has the user grid already defined a spot at point zero zero, which would be in this case two. So, We'll create an if statement and say if, this time we're using user grid at, we're checking the spot we're currently working on, yx, if that, and we'll say does not equal zero. We don't know what the user would pick, but it definitely wouldn't be a zero because zero is by definition blank in our uh, case. So we're going to say if the user has defined a spot for yx, then what do we do? Um, here's how we're, uh, there's several ways. Uh, first, before we do that, this is the if the user has defined a spot and we need to provide an else, otherwise do all of this other stuff, basically. Do all of this stuff right here. So I will uh, select that text, and if you select and hit tab, it doesn't turn it all to tabs, it just indents everything, and shift tab would go the other way. Um, so, uh, so now we'll say if there's a spot, if the user has 
already told us what the number is, do this. Otherwise, go through this guess and check. So, what do we do if the user has told us, hey, there's a two there? Then, what we will do is go on to the next number. That would make sense. Let's just copy this text here that says, basically, go on to the next number. Um, it does the indents a little different. All right, so if, the, if it's not zero, go on to the next number and call the loop grid. Let's see what happens when we run this with a two here. Remember, normally it picks a one for that corner. If we run it now, you will notice a two went there and the Sudoku happens to be solved. If, let's say, we had a, a three, two, one in a diagonal, we hit run and it runs it. And you will notice we have the exact digits three, two, one, and so on. If we add, um, let's see, in our current example, this is a nine. Let's see if we can get the Sudoku solver to make it an eight. Um, and now, hopefully, let me actually just raise this instead of looking back and forth. Now it's become an eight and nine went there. And you'll notice eight obviously was moved out from being, it used to be eight was one of the lower numbers. Now it's not. So it has uh, solved it successfully. Um, and now you have already created, uh, you don't have a graphical user interface, um, but you can solve Sudokus nonetheless. The graphical user interfaces are, uh, I don't think, uh, terribly important in this case, and they are um, uh, a little more uh, complicated, especially if you come from a, a background like I have from a Visual Basic or uh, GML, Game Maker, uh, both of those I find uh, significantly easier than uh, Java, although I'm sure some will disagree, and uh, I have worked on graphical interfaces with uh, C, and I would likewise uh, equate those as uh, quite difficult as well, in my estimation, but we will be dealing with those when we create a chess engine, which I am super excited and preparing for uh, as we speak. So there's one, let me just set these back to zero, um, and you might want to do likewise. So now you have a blank grid, and it solves it as it did before. But one thing it doesn't solve. I want to show you this. If I set, and you, you'll get used to this as you program more and more and get familiar with the language, the errors that could occur, because uh, languages are notorious for uh, uh, not thinking like people. They just do exactly what you say. If I set this last digit to anything, let's say to a 2, I want you to know if you'll have a surprising outcome. Uh, ponder on what you think it might be. See if you're right. Um, and great job if you were. Here's the result. Look, it's identical to the start grid. The start grid, the end grid, and it took one millisecond. It didn't do anything. This is where the one millisecond is a nice indication of what exactly happened. Another thing, just um, uh, just so uh, let's actually figure out what's, what's going on here. This item is 2. Now, let's look at this step by step. It comes here to the loop. Uh, loop, uh, and it says, uh, this procedure, it says, uh, if not, validity 8.8 eight is grid. Because normally, when this is 0, this location is invalid, but when it's any other digit, it is valid. It's only one of its number in its row, column, or square. And so you see if the very last, uh, this last digit turns into a number other than zero, if the user defines that number, it won't, be, it won't even try to solve it. And so that's obviously a glitch that we have with this program in its current state. And um, there, there are different ways of overcoming it. Uh, the most uh, obvious way, although perhaps the uh, most uh, uh, resource consumptive way, is to have the validity check, not only checkpoint x, y, but just check everything. And of course, um, that would uh, definitely solve your issue, but at the cost of resources. And that's always the battle. 
um, how efficient will your program be, and what will the cost of that efficiency be. So it's really twofold. And um, feel free to change uh, all sorts of stuff, whatever you like. Um, like I said, this is not the most uh, efficient program in the world, but let's just, uh, in our example where now let's have it one, two, three, you'll notice it's going to run this and solve it in, in my case, 82 milliseconds, which is incredibly impressive. It would take me um, several minutes to be able to do this by hand, and I would be using uh, a different uh, algorithms that uh, I have developed as program while I programmed uh, Sudoku. So hopefully this was a fun tutorial on how to make a Sudoku. And your first program, I have started sort of advanced. I haven't just started with a, a Hello World uh, example, although we did that with the command prompt to make it a little more challenging. Um, but I have really just jumped right into a full-scale program with multiple procedures. And hopefully all of this has somewhat made sense. Um, and feel free to uh, experiment and try to improve upon these things. Um, and like I said, this is, uh, will be the last tutorial uh, for Sudoku. And uh, feel free to uh, uh, improve upon and provide suggestions for uh, others on uh, this uh, uh, program, and I hope to see you next time. The next program we are making is quite a heads up if I can do a little bit of uh, a promo advertising here. We will be making uh, a chess engine, and I'll try to take it detailed step by step. I don't think there's too many videos uh, on the, the web that will take you through a step by step process in video of exactly how to program your own code, line by line, thought process by thought process. And of course, it will be very much abbreviated from the process I went through because uh, for every uh, line I write, I have tried probably a million other, I know that's exaggerating, but a ton of other uh, failed attempts before I managed to make it um, into what it is and a, and a chess engine that can play at least a reasonable game where it doesn't make too obvious a blunder and where it actually has a good reason for each move and so on. And we will uh, start off with making a graphical user interface. So if you are interested in applying that to this Sudoku or to any other program, watch the first few tutorials on my chess engine. I'll be focusing on uh, creating this graphical, simple graphical user interface. So I hope that uh, you will at least uh, watch the beginning of the chess engine before we get into too many of the uh, ideas of chess, which, believe me, um, it are uh, way too many to number, and, uh, and I have not even uh, begun to uh, research all of the, the knowledge that is out there. And uh, humans are still uh, uh, going pretty strong against... Uh, the top engine. So uh, this has been a pleasure, and I hope you enjoy Java.